April 14th, we had an earthquake around 9.30 at night. It was a 6.4, I think they ended up saying, magnitude. Um, then Saturday, April 16th, we had a 7.2. Um, so two fairly large earthquakes within um, a few days of each other. I think having two back to back caused that sense of urgency to increase a little bit because you have significant damage now in Mashiki where the first earthquake maybe um, liquefied some ground and caused some structural damage and the second earthquake went in and finished it and you know houses collapsed and there was a huge problem but people were evacuated so I think the second earthquake at one in the morning people weren't at home they were sleeping in their cars or they were out in evacuation centers and so I think it saved a lot of lives actually that there were those two there was an, a smaller earthquake two days before. The initial um, search for survivors was only a few days, I think six, seven days. It didn't take very long for them to identify exactly who was missing, call those houses, go there and find those bodies or find those people alive. Um, so the, the sense of urgency in the, in the beginning, they're so, especially the Japanese military response is so structured um, that they really have it under control uh, very, very quickly. Um, they were able to respond with blankets and food and, and uh, medicines and you know those things that you need right away within hours of the, the initial disaster. On Thursday night at 9.30, I came into work um, and I checked in with Western Army to see if there was any assistance that they would need from the U.S. forces. At that point, uh, Western Army was more than capable of handling the amount of damage and the emergency response services that were required of them. Um, and so really all I was doing was feeding information to USFJ and, and USRJ to keep them informed of, of the emergency response, um, just in case there was a, a, something that we could do. Within three or four days, we were able to start running supplies into the harder hit areas where the roads had been um, destroyed, so it was harder to get to those people. So I think they were eating bread and water, you know, for the first couple of days, and then we were able to kind of get some additional rations to those areas. Luckily, we only had a team of six um, that were here in advance of the conference. And so I was able to use those six people actually really well to integrate into that bilateral operations center um, to um, link in with USFJ when we started providing aid. Ultimately, after that week, that first couple weeks of response, it was clear that there wasn't a significant amount of damage um, and that Western Army was very sure that they were going to be able to continue um, planning as appropriate and host um, the exercise like we are today.